Hey everyone, you're listening to the Active Turnkey Podcast, a podcast designed for hands-off, passive real estate rental investors. In the Active Turnkey Podcast, you'll hear Tom Olson and Jared Stoltmeister discuss all things turnkey rentals with other turnkey providers, service providers, and rental investors. Our goal is to help you reach your financial freedom and whatever comes after that. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Active Turnkey Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Stoltmeister, and I have with me the Tom Olson, and we are back for another podcast. It cracks me up when he says that every time. Mm-hmm. He, every says, time. he says the Tom Olson, and that is like what my handle is. I think they call it a handle for social media. Sure. So all my social media handles are the Tom Olson, mm. but you know nobody else calls me the Tom Olson except for you, Jared. Sure. Well, it makes me... Uh feel good like I'm lifting up my like boss. I'm the only the only it's kind of like you when you hear the Ohio State correct right yeah that's kind of where like, I'm going it's like I'm the one and that. only that and, and that's what we have in our script that you want me yes to. um <laughs> shut up Jared you weren't supposed to tell everybody <laughs> yeah uh about all that so um no that's not true actually Jared did tell true. a little bit of a fib I, we do not have a it's, script that Jared's supposed to say that but he does like true. to say it and every time he says it, it makes me feel a little funny because I'm not the type that really likes to have people say nice things about me and mm. Um, I enjoy it inside, sure, but sure. like it's kind of like uncomfortable, uh-huh. you know. I don't for know. a moment. For a moment, okay. But it is nice when people say sure. nice things about yeah. you. But so are we gonna have a podcast. Today? We are. So oh, we're already recording. Oh my goodness, we're recording. We are recording. We're live, <laughs> and live. so we have a unique podcast. A little bit different than most, this, right? That we're doing. Be unique. Every one of our podcasts are unique. They are because uh, we have the Tom Olson and the. Well, Jared Stoutmeister. It's not unique if the Tom Olson's on every one. But that the Jared Stoutmeister's on every the, one. Okay. Uh, now that is a first. Yes. Now that now we've gotten. And we'll see. Up so a notch. It, maybe this might this might be the last one that V the Jared Stoutmeister's on. <laughs> we'll see. But Jared, you're half of the podcast. You, you can't. I don't think we're. It's we're true. not going to do that. I don't am. listen to him. No, I am. Don't I listen am. to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jared's going to be part of the podcast. So I know everybody was worried there for a second, but <laughs> calm yeah, down. My days are numbered. So this is number 44, wow. uh, yeah. podcast 44, and this one is going to be a little bit different. We you generally try to stay within right at the turnkey rental piece, um, and we're not going to stray from it uh, in, in moving forward. But in this one, uh, Tom had some really good opportunities and some good material that we thought would be beneficial for our, for our people um, as they're working through it. So today's uh, podcast is business and operator due diligence. Yeah, and I think this could apply a hundred percent to sure. turnkey operators. So we know we're not the only turnkey operator in the country, and we know we're not the only good one. There's lots of other mm-hmm. good ones out there, mm-hmm. um, and we're not even really necessarily, you know, talking about even vetting us. Like, I think part of the podcast, if you listen to podcasts, that is partly vetting us because you kind of get to hear sure. what we say and kind of how we think and all that good stuff. But when you're looking at other people to maybe invest in. Maybe you're looking at another turnkey provider. Mm-hmm. But I also mm-hmm. think that, you know, I know I'm not I'm not I'm not naive enough to to mm-hmm. think that like if you're listening to this podcast, the only thing you're ever gonna do is turnkey rentals. Sure. So, you know, with that, um, I'm a part of some masterminds around the country. I've been part of mastermind. I, I really do believe in masterminds and, and collectively being able to like uh, get the wisdom of other people that have been where you want to go mm-hmm. and people that are at a high level. Um, and I'm a part of a, of a family office mastermind that's for, you know, very wealthy, affluent people um, and how to invest. And, you know, we actually had a meeting about two months ago and it, I felt like, hey, this would be a really good topic for a podcast because they kind of, it was a it was an open mic, an open kind of like conversation with everybody. It wasn't a presentation. Mm-hmm. It wasn't one person necessarily. One person kind of led the conversation, but mm-hmm. it really wasn't one person's thoughts. It was the whole room's thoughts. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna kind of hit. You're gonna you're gonna hear some things that are kind of from a different angle, and from a different you know perspective, mm-hmm. so to speak. And um, so, so describe the room to us. Who was in this room with you when so, you had this? So yeah. mostly, again, it's people that are probably worth between five and fifty million. Okay. Um, there may, there's a couple of people in there that was, there's actually a billionaire in that group. And there is a couple family offices that actually manage for very wealthy, mm. affluent people. And again, I, maybe there's some billionaires that are listening to this podcast. I'm sure there is. Donald Trump's probably listening and well, I'm sure Joe you. Biden is as well. We're on, t- we're on the radar of both sides of, of the political spectrum mm-hmm. there. And I'm and why sure. Wouldn't you? Exactly. Why, why, why wouldn't yes. they listen? Um, but, uh, so I, I, I think, um, 
so in this room, like a lot of people, they have money, right? Mm-hmm. And they want to do deals, and okay. they and they and they're there's kind of like um, they get deals thrown at them all the time. Sure. And I'm sure that if you're listening to this, you have opportunities for deals all the time. And I think a lot of people get sucked into only focusing on the deal, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of what we talk about mm-hmm. is the deal itself. What are you looking for? What do you want? It's kind of the thing that people you know, really like gravitate towards. It's easy to get people in that conversation when you're talking about the house or mm-hmm. what to look for. Do you want a 3-1? How much mm-hmm. money for rent? And, you know, this podcast is going to cover that, and we've already covered it a lot, mm-hmm. but we're going to cover that as many ways as we possibly can. Sure. And I like to stray out. Jared said we're not going to stray, but I kind of like to kind of look at things from a little bit of a higher perspective and think, and I know turnkey rentals is only a part of people's sure. portfolio. So when when – you're looking at a, at a, at a, at a deal, so to speak, there's other factors in that deal. And I think one of the most important factors is that person that's going to hold the whole thing together. Right. We talk about it even with our property management, you know, like if we want to get more specific for what we do, the people that are going to actually manage the people that are going to actually make sure that this thing performs. And it's uh, it's very important to kind of look from other people's experience and know, hey, these people have seen these things and these things were red flags for them and maybe they learned their lesson the hard way Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe, or maybe these are just things that kind of annoy them Mm -hmm. and they don't want to do deals with people like this. So really this could be even a good podcast for operators and for people that want to be maybe a provider at some point and you want to offer um, deals. Know that this is what family office people Mm -hmm. are thinking. Mm -hmm. People that are wealthy this is what that collective room said. And again, at the end, there's some things that I kind of have added to what they said. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, most of this is going to be kind of what, you know, basically was was in the room. All right. Well, you ready to hit this? I, I don't know. I mean, are, are, are you ready, Jared? I'm ready. I'm ready to learn. All right. So Jared, Jared, Jared's got nothing. He doesn't want to add anything. No, right no. I mean, I this is me. I wasn't in the – I didn't have the opportunity to go to Jared the event. Jared was not at, at the event. So this so, is absolutely true. So anyway, so – what this was actually called in that event was amateur hour in the investment world. Mm. Okay, so it was kind of like it was kind of like these are things to look for when you think when somebody's offering you a deal. Sure. And these guys might be amateurs. And mm. it, and just so you know, just because somebody's an amateur doesn't always mean that you don't do a deal with them. Sure. I'm not saying that. I'm mm-hmm. like I I don't want everybody. But if there's many of these things, you might want to step back and look and rethink this. Sure. <laughs> and, and know what the risk is mm-hmm. going into the deal. And that's really what this is all about. Like an investment is always a risk. Absolutely. Every and time. that's kind of partly what we're part of the one of the points. If somebody doesn't think it's a risk, then it's probably not the right person because mm-hmm. they're they're mm-hmm. they're either too naive to know or, or over promise. They're over exact. Mm-hmm. So any, so actually that's what we're that's point number one, Jerry. What? Point number one. Like Jared doesn't even know what the Ask script is. One. Ask me another one. And he got it. <laughs> So Matt and it's and, and what was even stated wasn't just over promising. Mm, it's no. like embellishment mm. over promising. It's massive over promising. Sure. It's the guy that, you know, he comes up to you and he tells you that like he has got the deal for you. Mm. Um and you know, that was the first thing that kind of you know, everybody in the room, you know, mentioned. I think I met him at the car dealership. Massive over promising? Yeah. Oh, this is a person. Yeah, he, he was trying to sell me a car. I think that and guy. It was mass, exactly. Amazing so car. You you kind of think of that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You think of a used car salesman uh-huh. selling uh-huh. you a car for two thousand dollars that he says it's worth twenty thousand mm. dollars, and you could just buy this and return and sell it tomorrow for ten thousand dollars, okay. right? Nice. Um, yeah. So that is kind of the first thing that got brought up um, in this in this meeting was massive over promising, and I don't know if we really even need to explain that, Jared. Yeah. I mean, you I think, think people that, can relate? Yeah. Sure. So everybody's been, you know, over promised, um, you know, and, and so, so just, just, just think about that. If you're a provider, like you don't want to be massively over promising. Sure. And if you're somebody that is, you know, do you, do you want their product to be enticing? Yeah. Do you want it to be mm-hmm. a good deal? Mm-hmm. But if somebody's like, you know, going over and beyond to just say like, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, like, Ooh, watch out. Yeah, I mean, for us, just just to, if if you've had an opportunity to be on a call with me, uh, generally the first phone call, um, I'm gonna tell you how how our tell about our product, and I'll tell you that hey, it's possible I could. I said this to you before. It's possible I could be the best salesman you've ever mm-hmm. heard. Yep. And then from there, it, it's it's tongue in cheek, of course, and and then I say, hey, you know what? Just forget everything I said and come and visit us and verify it. 
You right. have to just verify <laughs> it for that reason. I, I don't want to overpromise and sure. paint this beautiful picture. Now, like Check Jared said, we don't make everybody come and do this. Sure. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's good. We're going to actually address that a little bit later. But I will say absolutely, like, the people that are out there that just paint only a rosy picture mm -hmm. and they're not really looking at the best interest of you. Like, I have a lending company. Mm -hmm. I have my mm -hmm. own turnkey mm -hmm. rentals. Like, mm -hmm. I want to know... I want to know the truth. I want to know what's the what's the, what what's important to me are two things. It is what's the most likely scenario, mm -hmm. um, and what is the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. And if I'm okay with those two things, I, I don't even care about best case scenario. True. And I think the problem is is most people only focus on best case scenario. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, like we are right now in the middle of showing people and, and selling even some homes that people have owned their properties for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And they're walking away with hundred thousand dollar checks. Mm -hmm. And you know, but I never have ever, not mm -hmm. once have I sold a property showing them that they're going to make 25, 30% ROI mm -hmm. over the next couple of years. I've never, and mm -hmm. I, I'm not even sure I would, I mean, I'm tempted to kind of show, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, so I think people call it case studies, you mm -hmm. know, like, mm -hmm. but the, when you see people's case studies, what do you normally see? Like you only see their best case oh, sure. scenarios. Sure. I'm tempted to kind of do it because it is such a juicy, great mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like I know that that's not the normal. Sure. That's not the most likely scenario. The and most was... likely scenario, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is what we try to show. Mm -hmm. What we try to show up front. This is the most likely situation. Could it be worse? Absolutely. Yeah, so Could not be everybody better? who bought Absolutely. a house five or six years ago is, is going to get, get that. that kind of return exactly. in this area. Yeah, yeah, some of them are going to get 30, 40, 50. Sure. Um, and I don't know anybody who's gotten less than that, mm. um, sure. to be completely honest with you. But like, that's the exciting thing about real estate and mm. by owning real estate is that you can, you really do really, really well if you're willing to take the risk mm. and if you're willing to go through the headache that, that it so, does. So no massive overpromising. Do not massive okay. overpromising. No, Jared does a good job of this. Um, he's been trained really well. Yes. So, by the master, uh, anyway, D. Tom Olson. No, 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 no. We're, we're going to skip right <laughs> over that. So the next one, and this was something that I kind of thought was a little funny because I still have one of these. And I use it for my personal. <laughs> I don't necessarily use it for my business, but this was something that was messed that was that was cascaded. So think about this: like if you are using a Gmail, or they even made fun of even worse Yahoo mm -hmm. or AOL mm -hmm. or God forbid Juno mm. or Hotmail is my favorite. Nice. Um, if you're using one of those emails, so if you're trying to do an investment and somebody's trying to they're they're selling, trying to sell you or tell you about what their product is and how great you know their 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 opportunity is for mm -hmm. you and they're using that email like again I don't think it's a deal breaker sure it's just one of those things to say hey like if this person can't afford the five dollars <laughs> now I have the, the the problem is is I still use that sure. you know Tomo Paint at Yahoo email that mm -hmm. I've had since I was nineteen years old. Mm -hmm. But I still use that from time to time. But I still do have a Tom at by Olson Group email, and I still have a Olson, you know, Property Services email, and I, I have all the emails from all the companies. I don't like to use them all because it's too many emails. But that's a different story for a different so, topic. So you're telling me that if someone's over promising and the email comes along through a hotmail, right? Then there's it probably should raise I'm, some I'm, red flags. Okay. Well, I think over promising is actually worse than oh, sure. the hotmail. It's just. But I'm just saying this is just one of those things yeah, 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 yeah. that. Okay. I got you. Well, I think I also again like I think this is two sided. I'm trying to talk here to providers and talk to people that are doing investments. Mm -hmm. Like I think both people should kind of know sure. that that these are things that indicators family office people are looking at mm. when when they're 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 dealing with it. So the next thing kind of goes along with this, um, and that would be not having a website. Or not having any kind of materials and no mm -hmm. credibility piece that can mm -hmm. kind of show this is the experience this person has. This mm -hmm. is this is this is they've put upfront effort. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. we've redone all yep. of our websites yep. and we did our websites years ago and then we would have to redo them. We know how much work it is. Mm -hmm. Like it takes in order to have a website, it's not just like, okay, I need to fill out a form and I have a website. It which it, you can do, but I it's guess not you could do be with, what and, you'd want you know, to so, be. Yeah, yeah. You know, it takes a lot of work to be able to have a right. decent site right. to show their team, maybe, mm -hmm. like we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, on our, our Buy Olsen Group website now has our team on it. And it takes it takes effort. It takes mm -hmm. upfront you know, planning and, planning and money mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. make that happen. So that sure. was something else that kind of came up. Um, again, I'm not saying it's a deal breaker. Sure. It's something, though, that goes into the equation of do I want to do a deal with this person? Uh, the next one is super long-winded essay writing, um, mm. and uh, you know, I, this I, I didn't understand this as much when I was in the room, but uh, I did think that this was a good thing to you know to bring out. But it, like, if somebody's trying to do a deal with you, mm. 
and it's like you're getting like 16 pages of an email and you're actually supposed to read the whole thing <laughs> um you know and the very first thing now honestly like we have some introductory emails that we send out and they do there are i should say they're kind of lengthy but they're 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 doing many things they're introducing you to maybe like the property manager maybe they're in, they're, they're they're doing many things that email has like as a trigger to do many things so that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about like about a project mm -hmm. about a deal about mm -hmm. a you know, like, should it be a couple paragraphs? Maybe. Like, there should be a reason why, you know, there, you want to deal. But anyways, that was something that was kind of brought up. So I figured, hey, you know, why don't we just, you know, uh, bring it out. So the next one. High stress, high pressure, communication, mm. sales techniques. Now, Jared, <laughs> he is the master at this. Oh, man. I'm just kidding. At my will, right? <laughs> There's a lot of sales season. training yeah. out there that I actually think is kind of good. Sure. You know, I think a sales professional should be trained. And mm -hmm. I think there are some people that are, when they're buying, if they know if you're a professional or not, buy if you follow a sales process sure. and, and all that. You do feel a little bit more professional by handling it. But at the end of the deal, if it's all about pressure, mm -hmm. if they're like trying to pressure you, um, if they're and if it's all about them like, you know, trying to get you to commit on the very first email about a, the very first deal, like that's definitely something that we you ought to consider. Mm -hmm. Like people should, there should always be a pushback at some point. There should be back and forth pushback, understanding what's going on, uh, and and trying to make sure that if you're vetting a deal, if you're vetting an operator, if you're vet, vetting a business, make sure that you kind of like that's a big red flag to me. Well, I I can see that because really in the end it seems like that guy's eager. Mm -hmm. And if if he needs you, right. right then, yes, it seems like you know. I'm initially on my first phone call. I'm I'm not trying to make a sale. Mm -hmm. I'm really not. So, if, but if I really need you to buy a house in that first phone call, that's that could be dangerous, right? You got it. Like man, it, that and I think that's the, the the feeling you walk away with. Hey, mm -hmm. is this person? Am I the only person that ever is going to buy a property <laughs> or or do a deal yeah, with this person? Yeah, yeah. Or like. So I think there's a difference. Like sometimes I think that you can be pressured into buying things sure. because there is demand. Yeah. And Absolutely. like there is, and like honestly, like it, this isn't even a technique that we use because like we're trying to use a sales technique. It right. is literally like the truth. Like the truth is, is like when we send the deals out, mm -hmm. they're sold. And we're mm -hmm. not trying to say that to people nope. to, to be high pressure. Mm -hmm. It is just the truth. It's so the fact like, of today. Yep. Right. So like understanding, mm -hmm. are you the only person or is there many other people that also mm -hmm. want this product? That's a difference between high pressure and like, well, they really do have a product that mm -hmm. is in high demand. So just kind of understanding the difference between those two. Um, this is something that I think is funny sometimes. And this is actually probably, some of these are not, you know, deal breakers, but this next one is definitely a deal breaker for me, Jared. So this is refusing to say anything about the project unless you get them on the phone or unless they sign an NDA. Mm. Um, that is something where it's like, okay, if you want me to sign an NDA because about a deal, like, I'm sorry, sure. more than likely, we're not going down this yeah. trail. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, kind of, you know, a little bit down the road here, we're gonna talk about daisy chains. A lot of times, these are daisy chains, and the only reason why they're making you sign an NDA is because they know that somebody else has this house or this this deal or this opportunity already wrapped up, and they're just like a next person on top of this. So, mm. like, understand why. You know, most NDAs, that's the re that's not all. I shouldn't say that there's never a case for an NDA. There is cases at times for, you know, the NDA in the investment world, but it shouldn't be the norm. And for most, I'm telling you, like, they better hit every other point if they're going to make me sign an NDA. And they I better they better come highly recommended, sure. and there better be way more people that, you know, have done this than, you know, than not, than mm. for me to say I'm going to go down that trail. Um the other thing kind of goes along with this a little bit is ha this has to be explained over the phone. Sure. You know, they can't send you a picture. They can't send you a video. They can't send you um, an email explanation. Mm -hmm. they, they can't, like, it, the only way they're going to communicate with you is over the phone. There's many reasons, mm -hmm. obviously, for that, you know. So that's just something, again, that got mentioned on this uh, family office event. The next one, and I kind of mentioned it, was daisy chain deals. You know, like, and actually, it's funny. We've been part of these deals at times. Like, we used to wholesale properties. We talked well, about it. It's, it. it's possible some listeners may not understand what you mean by daisy yeah, chain. Yeah, so, so I, I'll explain. Okay. So basically, it's when like somebody's saying that they're selling you a property, but it's really somebody else. And sometimes it's actually somebody else who's somebody else who's somebody else. <laughs> like we've, I've again, I've been a part of a deal where we held the property. Somebody else got it under contract with us to mm -hmm. buy it from us, and then they 
had a wholesale agreement with another person who had another person. It was four people. Mm -hmm. The house actually went through four people's hands at closing that day. Like for the most part, if I'm an investor, if I'm on the end of that, like I probably am not going to just because I don't even want sure. the hassle. Not sure. because, not because I'm not willing to pay the price. Mm -hmm. Like I think some people get stuck on like, I'm not going to pay that price because I know there's going to be four people making money. That's not the reason. Sure. I don't care how many people make money yep. in the deal. It's just like, it doesn't feel right. Sure. It's, a lot of things can go wrong. Exactly. There's a mm -hmm. lot of, you got it. So mm -hmm. that's, Another thing that kind of came up on this email. The next one I think is kind of funny. And I've probably, this only happened to me once or twice, but it has happened to me. Uh, I've got nine projects and they're all like these outlandish projects. Like I've got, I've got this hot project going on in the Caribbean islands and I'm working with a sports team and we're doing this big project over here. And then, oh, I got a, mil a billion dollar project in Dubai. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like just completely outrageous and ridiculous. And now, am I saying that those deals never happen? No, I'm not going to say that. But like what I'm looking for and probably what you're looking for if you're listening to this podcast is the cookie cutter deal. Sure. Right? Sure. I mean, I even was at a uh, an event a while ago, and one of my friends was actually on the stage, and I was so glad he said it because it was so good because they were talking about all these things that they were doing to their houses. This is just even single family. They're doing all this extra this and extra this and this. And, um, he, and, and somebody even made fun of using gray walls. And one of my friends was like, well, I don't know. Like, I paint every one of my houses gray, and I think we do pretty good. Like, I want this, this the cookie cutter sure. block, like – you know, because what? Why? What? What do we want with our money? We want to make an, a return sure. on our money. Sure. We want that repeatable. We don't want something that has to be outlandish every single time. So, even if this was a good deal, and even if this was real, mm -hmm. which most of the time I'm going to tell you, it's not. Sure. <laughs> uh, this is one of those those red flags where most of the time I'm not even interested. I won't respond to an email. I won't even like. I'll listen to finish listening sure. to somebody's conversation, and in my head. I'm rolling my eyes. They're either <laughs> high level, right? And maybe they're too high level for me. Yeah, right. And that's fine. Which is fine. Yep. Or they're just running. And, and, let, me, just and run, let me let me mention running. one more point with that. Even the people that are doing these deals, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, like the people that are flipping like the million dollar, $10 million houses, like, yes, sometimes they're making money. But I bet you more are losing money than making money on those deals. Those are mm -hmm. not what most people would... Sure. Would you? I'm just, I'm just like throwing that out there to you. Like, you know, you what you really want is figure out what you can be good at, figure mm -hmm. out what you can understand, figure out what you can bring to the table, and how you can help um, create your own personal financial freedom plan. Uh, the next one I think is 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 pretty should be obvious, but I don't think it is to to some people. Mm -hmm. I don't want my money to be first in on a really large project. So let's just say there's like a 250 million to like a billion dollar project and they're like doing you know hundred thousand dollar raises um and like you're the first zero to one million dollars sure. in that sure. deal like i'm just saying like if you do it you better make sure that you know number one this money is, is at risk money mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not money that is mm -hmm. probably going to be uh like high on the list this is like the money that you might use for crypto at this point um and i'm not saying i'm against crypto at all like i, I, I but i am saying like if i'm investing in crypto that's not my Full portfolio. Like sure. I'm making, this is my gambling money. <laughs> like some people gamble, I buy crypto. You know what I mean? Like I'm totally happy with that. There, you know, I think that there is most even stockbrokers, most like even financial planners would say, hey, there's 4%, 10%, maybe at the max that you want to have in this kind of super high possible return. Mm -hmm. But you know what? There's a good likelihood that it may not, mm -hmm. it may not be there. Um, but I don't, most of the time, you know, I'm not even going to consider being that investor when I'm, you know, if I'm going to be in that first pool of money, that's going to be mm -hmm. for a super large project. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is a great one, Jared. This is the best deal you've ever seen. It's good. What do you think, Jared? If somebody tells you that, what, 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 what are you thinking? Uh, yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm definitely, uh, definitely critical of that, uh, of that opportunity and you know we've had situations where bring it into just my experience we've had situations where we've had to tell buyers hey this is not a typical deal mm -hmm. um but that's few and far between absolutely and but and again so, even using the words this is not a typical deal means this is better than normal sure but we're never saying this is the, the best, best deal, deal ever. you've sure. ever seen yeah, like right. i don't know i have heard this quite often like mm -hmm. oh, i can't believe i got this is the best deal as soon as i hear that i'm like okay i'm looking at 
amateur hour. I'm sure. looking at sure. very inexperienced mm-hmm. investor. I'm mm-hmm. looking at, I better make sure I get the rest of my stuff and the rest of these points are kind of covered. Um, yeah, I'm thinking what's that. not in the scope of work. <laughs> what's not, ha- you know, exactly. Like, uh. um, I, and honestly, it's kind of funny because like I've, we've been in the wholesale you know, world mm-hmm. and we, I know a lot of wholesalers and when I get, we buy money, we buy houses from wholesalers. So, and it's, it's, it's almost as if like when a wholesaler sends me a deal, I can't read a word they say. Absolutely. It doesn't even like pertain to me. Like yep. I just skip right through it yep. and I go to exactly what I, what I want to mm-hmm. see mm-hmm. pictures mm-hmm. and where the house is at sure. and, and all that. But um, never, 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 never go after those deals that somebody tells you. I shouldn't say that. Like, you might be able to go after the deal, but you're, you're probably going to make it a red flag. Does that make sure. sense? The next one, and I think this is good. I think we, I do think we do a really good job about this, is like somebody being over persistent or they're like too fast to follow up. Mm-hmm. You know, like you got off the phone with them. And I'm not saying that we never do this because we should. I think it's sometimes like if that's the next thing on your to do list that day, like, so you got the phone, you send an email. That's fine, mm-hmm. but like the over persistence of like follow up again and follow up again and follow up. Like if you've never done a deal with somebody and they've sent you ten emails in the first two or three days, oh, yeah. like uh, what else is this guy doing? Is oh, it yeah. am I his only investor? Sure, sure. Um, he's obviously a newbie because he knows that that's going to be annoying, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, so that's just something that yeah I don't respond well to that. I don't want to be bombarded. If anything, I'm I'm I'm, I'm pulling back at that point. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I totally agree. So overly persistent. So the next one I think is, is good and it kind of goes a little bit along with that. But uh, last one we just said was not being respectful of time. Mm. And uh, the statement that was made at the group was let's take a full day. Mm. And I mean, and I even said this when I was in the group, like I think there are times where like a full day is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Like I and, I, and again, we don't require this of our investors. Yeah. Yeah. We do recommend it though. It's mm-hmm. just something we recommend because mm-hmm. I believe if you're going to, if you're going to be deeply invested in an area, in a community, in a, in a company, like I do think if you can, it's worth your time. Yeah. Now, now I do understand like if you're worth 10, 20, 30 million a sure. whole day, you might, that's a lot of money that you, or a lot of you know value mm-hmm. that you've taken away from your time. And I don't think it has to happen every time. Maybe mm-hmm. you know better and maybe you've already, obviously if you've made, created that kind of wealth, you, you, you may not need to have that, that full day. But I do think that, um, you know, being respectful of time mm-hmm. is important and, sure. and making sure that uh, the other person is respectful of your time and not just constantly bombarding you with all their needs and, and what they need from you. Uh, so so th- that well, kind of goes both ways. To, along that line, we, we promote people to come in. We, mm-hmm. I would say even sometimes challenge or recommend, but it's never to do a deal. Right, absolutely. It's not one deal. We don't want you to come and look at this specific house and, and hang out all day long, fly, fly in from Florida, California. Yeah, 100% true. It's about our long-term right. relationship, and that's that. That's enough at that point. We feel like you could or should be able to make the decision long-term off that. It helps. Visit. It really yeah. does help yeah. strengthen that relationship totally. and and breaking bread and even going to lunch mm-hmm. and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff really mm-hmm. helps. So mm-hmm. the next one is um, somebody that says this was kind of funny. Somebody says. Let me tell you a little bit about our company and our deal. And then they speak for 10 to 15 minutes straight mm-hmm. without a pause, no breath. They just, it seems like how in the world do they do that without breathing? Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> so, sure. and I, again, like I could be guilty of this at times because I do get excited and I understand that to a certain degree. But like, I think in our process and our thought process is exact opposite of this. Like, I really don't really want to tell you about our stuff until I've heard from you. Mm-hmm. I really want to know who you are, yeah. where you're at in your life cycle, mm-hmm. what are your goals, what sure. are your, how, how, and then I wanna see if I fit. Mm-hmm. If, can I actually fit in your goals? Are we gonna be a good fit long term? Or is this just something that like, you thought it was sexy to buy a turnkey rental and you wanna, cause I don't wanna really wanna work with those people. Like I, it's kind of both ways. Like mm-hmm. I'm looking at this from the perspective of, you know, I may not wanna work with this person. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and you should be too. Like yep. you, you yep. and if it doesn't fit, if the core values don't fit, if you don't feel like there's a good synergy between the two people that you guys can think the same way, those are things that you should be thinking about. Um, but 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 making sure, and that can, the next point is really like kind of like a follow up on that. But not having the patience to listen first and kind of craft a custom response and a custom approach to work. That's what you want to see. Sure. Like if you see somebody that's actually asking you, hey, what are your goals? Like. How, and I want to make sure that we're a good fit. Those are mm-hmm. great upfront, you know, conversations to have. Yeah, that custom conversation that is brought together by experience. Absolutely. And so, if you have the experience, you have to know your product. You understand. You've been on this call many times, 
So you're, you, you don't have to go by the script. You can work in, in tandem with that person because I've noticed on some calls, some guys are really quiet. They really just want to hear what you have to say. And other calls, there's a lot more conversation and I need to make myself stop and say, hey, where are you at? What questions do you have? I've said a lot so far. You know, mm -hmm. what are you thinking? Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. And so there's differences there. But in the end, not being tied down to one specific straight line script really helps. Well, I think script is, is one thing, but also just like they're so excited about what they're doing that mm -hmm. they're not really concerned about what, what, what piece sure. you are sure. in the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so like I really think that that's, that's a value add. Mm -hmm. If somebody's actually concerned, just the concern, mm -hmm. just the care. You know, one of the things that we do in our company is we actually pray for our investors. It's yeah. one of the things that we True. think are is important to us. I actually think it's important to me that my investors make money. Absolutely. Um, and uh, so that's what I believe that that's and I do that because I believe that's what you should be looking for. But mm -hmm. I do that because I really do want that to be the case. So mm -hmm. that's what you're looking for. You're looking for. And I know I can't service everybody. I mean, mm -hmm. we're to the point now where it's really hard. It's true to even service the people that want to do the deals with us because we have so many people that want to do the deals with us. But I, I, I'm just, I know there's other people out there and I know mm -hmm. that you're going to find other deals and other providers and other people that you can, that you want to work with, or maybe hedge funds you want to work with, or, you know, syndications that you want to be a part of all those things. Like I think all of these points apply. So the next one I think is, these are things that I've kind of added. Um, these things were not necessarily Wisdom of Tom. These were not necessarily mentioned, but I think that it really applies mm -hmm. to this whole concept. I think the next one is um, a big red flag to me is the person I'm working with, the person that wants me to give my money or invest my time, talent, or treasure. Really, mm -hmm. doesn't matter what it is, um, into their project. They don't have any processes. Mm -hmm. They don't really have anything that. They don't really, so at that point, like I know they don't really know what they're doing. What like, are some key questions you would ask to get to the bottom of that quickly? How would you get to that quickly working well, with somebody? So let me give you an example of what we do. So what we do right now, um, so let, let, me, let me just use the lending, you know, for instance. So again, I am not looking for lenders. I have plenty of lenders. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would never say no to somebody that really sure. wants to be a lender for us, but we have way more lenders than I can actually deploy their money right now. Um, but like for our lenders, for instance, somebody, you know, messages me that I don't know necessarily. Mm -hmm. And they say, hey, you know, one of your lenders, you know, refer to same thing with like even our, our turnkey. So somebody says, hey, you know, you know, so and so referred me to your company. I think, it, you know, I, it'd be a good conversation. So I have a quick 15 minute conversation with them. And then I have a process. My, my next process is to connect them with Jared and maybe even Cheryl at the same time, our property manager, or I connect with Jared. Jared has, then has a conversation and then does it with Cheryl. And then Cheryl um, is probably the easiest, you know, one in this, you know, thing to, uh, to, to talk about, but she has a property management agreement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the property management agreement in itself is a process. Mm -hmm. sure. Sure. <laughs> so they have all, you know, they, and they will show you everything in there. And even we've actually even written a whole thing that says, what to expect in a good property management mm -hmm, manager, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's like I don't even know how long it's a it's an ebook and probably I don't know sixty pages or something, but it basically outlines all of our processes. Mm -hmm. well, this is our procedures. This mm -hmm. is our things. Back to the lending. When I introduce somebody, somebody comes in and they want to loan money to us. I have a process. I connect them with Heather, and then mm -hmm. Heather has a process. Right. Heather will then like send them a copy of our note mortgage, a copy mm -hmm. of the of the actual process written out. Hey, this is what you have to do. This is what we do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what I'm looking for. And, and every company is going to be different. So I can't say that everybody's process is going to be the same as ours. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is like, that's you should be looking for that. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of goes along with this is the next point. Do they have people? Sure. <laughs> Does Is there somebody else in that organization that knows what's going on mm -hmm. and that can help walk them through a problem, mm -hmm. help them, you know, they have enough knowledge about the investment vehicle that you're trying that they're trying to get you to invest or, or is there just one person that and that's the only person that knows anything and mm -hmm. the only person that you can talk to it's very dangerous um, if you're looking to invest long term uh, with somebody uh, you have all your eggs in a basket that's that's one person right it's I mean it's one thing dangerous. to have a lot of eggs in one basket when there's a whole group of exactly people exactly and a whole like a whole bunch of people that mm -hmm. if one person isn't there that day mm -hmm. well now there's somebody else to pick up exactly. the slack it's kind of like you know there, there's some i've talked to, to to older investors and they tell me i don't really like brand new property managers 
I don't like I don't like to work with a property manager that hasn't been in business for at least two years. Hmm. They, they they don't do that. Like they wait. Why? Because they want to make sure of these two things. They want to sure. make sure they have processes and mm-hmm. people. And they mm-hmm. and they know if they're only dealing with that one person and that one person they want to be like on the phone with them all the time mm-hmm. and they don't have other people sure. that are actually handling the customer communication, mm-hmm. then like that person doesn't number one, that person doesn't know what they're doing from a from a business owner's perspective. Sure. And number two, like what if that person gets gets hit by a bus? Mm-hmm. Like there's a single point of failure there. And that goes to process, that goes to people. So making sure, I, to me, this is this is probably one of the most important things that I want to look at when I'm wanting to invest a lot of money into a certain area or a certain business or a certain, is do they have processes? Do they have other people in the organization that know about the investment you know, well enough to be able to complete the transaction without that one person that's you know in the deal? So it's, it seems like it would be difficult because in, in the end, if you're trying to build a portfolio of investments, you're scaling. Mm-hmm. And you realize that this guy can't scale. Absolutely, they will never be able. So to scale. You're, you're not going to be able to scale yourself with somebody who can't scale themselves. So it's certainly uh, you know uh, something to pay attention to. Yeah. So <laughs> back to that, like most. So these older guys that I've talked to have said they like to work with people that manage between 200 and 1,000 doors. Like that's kind of like their what I have been told. And mm-hmm. I don't know. Again, like we have 300, 300-ish, 350 in that range right now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But. You know, so like understanding, like there's a reason why you don't want the newbie. There's also a reason why you maybe you don't want the guy that's been in business for like 30 years. Sure. Like they've gotten their own ways and they don't want to, you know, it's kind of both. It's mm-hmm. kind of like you, you do want to kind of let, look at it from both perspectives there. So this is a, this is one that again, I, I'll, I'll add, I thought it was kind of funny. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. We'll see. Maybe Jared will think it's funny. Maybe not. But people that just say stupid things. Yeah. You know, I have heard a lot of people on Facebook. They They just say stupid things. Yeah. Um, a lot of guys will get on and they're, they'll video themselves and like, it just is kind of like, why in the world would I want to do business with somebody who is always saying stupid stuff? Sure. Like, it's just like, it's nonsense. It's like yeah. ridiculous. Don't to me, like, I don't want I would never ever work with somebody that says something stupid publicly or like I, I, I was at a conference about, I don't know, four or five months ago and a guy said something to me and I was like, Ooh, it was probably one of the biggest turns offs to me of anything I've ever heard. He's like, I'll do anything as long as it makes money. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. it's just you understand how stupid that mm-hmm. of a of a of a statement that is. I mm-hmm. mean, I I, I I I don't know how else to like. It almost makes me cringe to think about you know people that pop their mouth off mm-hmm. all the time mm-hmm. and they're always criticizing somebody else. They're always telling everybody else how horrible everybody else is and how awesome they are and mm-hmm. how many awesome wonderful things they have done. Um, and also again, just stupid things like, you know, I'll do anything if it mm-hmm. makes money like that to me, I just, you can see that there's a segment of people who, who may think that's cool. I, I don't know. Right. No, I, I mean, you, there's, it's, if you look at these people who are thought leaders in some cases or, or people who have a people following them, people have a large crowd and you look at their material and you're thinking, why are people watching this person? Uh, exactly. But to, to your point, if that irritates you, that's probably why people who, who identify with Tom Olson do because that irritates you. And so well, it makes but sense also like the, this, he actually did get brought up with the family office. So this is something I'm adding to it, but it was mm-hmm. like, it got brought up as a sub point underneath, like over promising and mm-hmm. over like, pe- you know, people that just won't talk. They just say like stupid stuff. They just, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that is not just me. I can promise you. And I, I do, I know where you're going with that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, obviously you want to work with people that fit your core values sure. and the way you think think and connect but at the end of the day like really like who if you actually stop and think about it Mm -hmm. that's the problem and Mm -hmm. i think that's what this podcast is all about get the people to stop and think we think about it like why would you want to work with somebody that's wasting their time doing i mean there's so many reasons why Mm -hmm. you know uh but at the end of the day i think there are some people who identify with the idea that they are they too would be one to make money at all costs you know i'm saying so so i mean they they may respect that they may if you don't think that's stupid there More you power go. to Absolutely. you. I just think Absolutely. it's pretty stupid. <laughs> Agree. I'm with you, Tom. <laughs> uh, the, the next one that I wrote down is having they use paperwork that doesn't protect you at all. Like when we sat down and started doing our paperwork, we tried to we sat down with an attorney and an actual other customer that was going to buy from us or loan money to us, and we actually said, "Hey, want to make sure that this has like." the proper things in it that's going to protect both parties. We mm-hmm. don't really want to make sure we, 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 we want to make sure that we're protecting mm-hmm. our investor. Like when we 
borrow money from somebody, we want to make sure we have clear title. We want to make sure that we have a title policy. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we have insurance on the property and the mm -hmm. insurance is covering the owner. Like those are just some, some little simple things. But you know, when you're doing a deal, especially, I mean, honestly, it's really hard when you're dealing with a fund. Cause honestly, like most fund paperwork is like, doesn't protect you at all hmm. um but just make sure you read the paperwork and make sure that you're okay with what it says because if you're not like you're never going to be okay with a deal you mm -hmm. just never are so mm -hmm. um you know they don't use paperwork that uh protects you uh we've got two more and then i just have kind of like a wrap up okay. for you we have time for that sure. all right so the next one is um this is something that i am so adamant about probably the most important thing about everything i'm going to talk, talk about is this next point and I think we already hit this a little bit already, but they never mention worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. think worst case scenario is something that should always mm -hmm. get brought up. I, sure. I actually am so adamant about bringing up worst case scenario. I try to bring up worst case scenario first and then go with most likely mm -hmm. scenario. Mm -hmm. I never try to bring up best case scenario. Well, I mentioned it occasionally in a conversation if somebody wants to keep asking questions and go down a long you know, conversation like, Mention things that have happened that mm -hmm. are kind of what you would consider best case scenario. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I'm never going to sell a project on best case scenario. And mm -hmm. I see this happen a lot, all the time, it seems like, especially with multifamily and some of the big deals. Like, we're going to get 25% you know, return on investment and all this. And I'm like, that is, you know, that is if everything goes perfect the whole time. Um, it, it, it's not what's normal. It's kind of mm -hmm. like these the, the uh, crypto guys that have, you know, they bought it like, less than you know one tenth of, of a penny and now it's worth like whatever you know bitcoin mm -hmm. millionaires out there like it's like that's not if you're buying in crypto right now that's not the most likely mm -hmm. scenario that's that's the very rare you know unicorn <laughs> we actually had a podcast on unicorn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um that's 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 the best case scenario and we should never be focused on best case scenario and if we don't hit best case scenario we should be okay sure. we should be happy and we should be willing to accept worst case scenario. Sure. So if you're willing to accept worst case scenario and you understand what the most likely scenario is, that's when I say, okay, I want to do a deal. It seems after that case, your your due, your due diligence takes you to the point where you're going to do this deal and it's based upon best case. It's almost a guarantee to miss that mark. Exactly. It's you're, you're hitting almost a guarantee. hittable mark. So yeah. be very careful. Mm -hmm. I mean, even with performance, like I... I think performers are important, but mm -hmm. performers, I believe, are most likely scenario. It's going to mm -hmm. be off of that. It's going to mm -hmm. either be higher or lower. It's mm -hmm. never going to hit that. Sure. The one thing I can guarantee about a, about a performer is it will never be exact. It will mm -hmm. never hit that exactly. Mm -hmm. Like so, <laughs> so you know what I'm saying. So, um, so and, and I, I think I want to make sure I, that you understand why. I don't think it's because people are always trying to rip you off by focusing on best case scenario. Mm -hmm. Really, what it is is that they're just too naive. The people that are doing that are doing that that they're, you know, honestly, even I think even the people that are saying stupid things are normally, it's not the guys that are saying stupid things that are like have are twenty year veterans mm. in in the business. Sure. Those people never like the older mm. I get, the less I sure. want to be known, sure. and the less I kind of want to be like, okay, uh, if you want to talk to me, come talk to me, but I don't really care too much about being an influencer. Or, like if you want if I, you want me my influence, great, like I'll be there. I don't want to I don't want to you know be out there. You know too much anymore that i'm trying to be more you know hands off um but like i've learned a like guess what worst case scenario happens mm -hmm. <laughs> you know there it, with a rental property there are twenty thousand dollar fixes mm -hmm. that happen mm -hmm. and um to me that's about the worst case scenario i've experienced mm -hmm. <laughs> but 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 it does happen like it really does it's not it's not if it's going to happen at some point if you own enough property, if sure. you own 100 properties, you're going to have at least one of those. Percentages would say it's going to happen at probably the equal rate as the best case. Maybe, maybe, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, for it to work exactly according to plan, yeah, it's right. it's pretty it's pretty rare. So just know that the again, like I don't think it's I think sometimes it's malicious. Sometimes you mm -hmm. do have people yep. with big yep. personalities that I know have taken advantage of people, mm -hmm. but so, a lot of times the reason why you're not hearing worst case scenario is because. They're just too naive. They're too inexperienced to understand it could happen to them. Mm -hmm. And um, when somebody doesn't mention what it is and doesn't think it's possible, run. Um, you know that's a pretty <laughs> big deal to me. Um, so, anyways, the next one is they don't provide data. 
to show their product has merit. So again, I think part of this is because they have no experience. They have mm-hmm. no upfront. They, they don't even have, they don't even know what, what it's going to, what, what it's going to do. Um, and they, they haven't, you know, they, they don't have any data. They don't have any long-term data, short-term data. They have nothing to really show that, Hey, what I'm doing actually makes sense. Um, and this is why it makes sense. And this is what's going on mm-hmm. uh, in the market. No, it's really, it's really good stuff. Really helpful. And again, I agree with Tom. This is applicable to, to, it can be applicable to turnkey if you're looking turnkey, but a lot of this is bigger. And, and in the end, most people don't stay within one particular model. So this could certainly Absolutely. help you as you're trying to look into different options um, and different angles. Um, and this isn't really, this is obviously isn't all one person. Nope. Uh, this is this is a makeup of many different people and, and triggers. And what's really interesting, again, is that all this was was taken and there was a collaboration of many, mm-hmm. many people who've been doing this for a very long time. And then one thing that was stated, I'll go back to the meeting. So the one thing that was stated um, that I think is such, it's so wise. And I really like it. And the, more, the older I get, the more and more I, I, I keep thinking to myself, if I'm going to do something, I want it to be like this. And, and what was mentioned is, like the smartest investors, the ones that are the best, the ones that really like rise above everybody else, every deal they do, they're trying to make either one of two things. Number one, either there's something that they can bring to the table to help. Hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If Because again, if it's just money, it's really easy. In today's market, it's really easy. It's hmm. cheap. Money is not, money is the easiest thing to, to get, get your hands on right hmm. now. Mm-hmm. You know, with a dollar doing what to do, I mean, we've printed, I think, 20 to 25% more money in the last year than we had previously. Mm. Like, just think about that. That's, we've added 20% money of, mm. of the U.S. dollar. Like, mm. that's just crazy wow. how much, all that means is our money's worth less, just so everybody knows. Yep. You know, I think we think it's, things are great because prices are going up. Mm-hmm. All it means is, like, we are having a crash right now, and that crash is the U.S. dollar. Mm. Um so, and maybe it's a different topic, different podcast. It is. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like, um, what can I bring? Maybe I can bring time. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can bring a talent. Maybe mm-hmm. I have a skill. Mm-hmm. Maybe I have a connection mm-hmm. that I can help. I can inject into this that's going to make it more valuable. True. So the best investors of the world, they're looking for that. And they're also looking for, hey, what else do I have going on? And how can this be synergistic mm-hmm. to everything else that's going on? I'll give you an example. So I have a turkey company, right? Mm-hmm. I have a construction management company for licensed contractors in many different areas. I have a property management company. Guess what? All three of those companies work very well together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have a lending company. Guess what? The lending company also kind of also somewhat feeds the mm-hmm. other ones. I had a mastermind. Mm-hmm. Guess what? I got rid of the mastermind. Honestly, partly because of this point. Mm-hmm. And when I heard this gentleman say this, I was like, man, like I think that really makes a lot of sense. You know, the best investors in the world are ones that like that, even though it's somewhat of a real estate mastermind to a certain degree, and I thought I got value out of it, it wasn't synergistic really with all the other companies. They didn't really fit together. There wasn't synergy between them all. It was kind of like it was its own little pod, and then we had these three pods over here. So Mm -hmm. I said, hey, let's focus on the lending company. Let's like, because that is synergistic. That Mm -hmm. is in the midst. We can really like feed off each other and it can add value. It can add value to the the other company. So Mm -hmm. if you're building a portfolio and you're doing that, how can you do that? You know, like even picking a property manager. I think one of the mistakes I've seen people make is like they'll buy 20 properties in 20 different states in the the country. Like, Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Like find three maybe (laughs) or even two or whatever. Mm -hmm. And get those people that you really like and make sure that it can be synergistic and you can kind of find a way where the investment that you're going to do, you can either add value to it mm-hmm. or it's going to be synergistic with the rest of your mm-hmm. your, your world. No, it's really good. I, I think it's interesting, um, uh, that last point, when uh, particular buyers, when they come in, you know, we see all different types that come in and want to buy from Olson Group. And sometimes they come, uh, some buyers come in and they're ready to go, they're ready to work together. And some are a little bit more uh, standoffish, uh, if that's the right way to put it. They want to control uh, the situation. Um, and in really what ends up happening is they either don't buy um, or over time, if, depending, on, uh, depending on the situation, they, they stop buying. What, what I found though is interesting is over time, they begin to see the value of the team and it, it kind of evolves into it's not the control anymore because they see the value in the team. 
And it's and in in if you buy from Olson Group, it is I wouldn't use the word partnership. I feel that's too strong, but it is us working together to build a portfolio Mm -hmm. and that's and that's how it should be so uh you know obviously we're we're not in business very very long if we don't have the investors coming in and and buying it as from as far as our turnkey side of the business um and then likewise generally speaking it's difficult for people to to build their portfolios like this without having people providing them with opportunities so it it seemed a lot like that has been a, a, a something that's developed with Olson Group is the, the relationship piece. So having synergy and trying mm-hmm. to make sure that you can add value to that proposition Absolutely. as well. Mm-hmm. And um, it's not just money. Trust me, money is the cheapest piece of the puzzle mm-hmm. to, in today's mm-hmm. economy. So I, we hope that this podcast brought you value. If it did, I'd love for you guys to go over to uh, Apple Podcasts and mm-hmm. give us a five-star review or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tell mm-hmm. your friends about us. Mm-hmm. Um, we're really not trying to build a huge list. We're really not trying to have more buyers we have plenty of buyers plenty of lenders plenty of people that we work with plenty of work to do right jared plenty. uh but at the end of the day um if it did bring value to us it would be good and we would appreciate it if you'd give us a five-star review don't forget we do build rental portfolios for investors so if you are interested in starting uh you can reach out to me at jared at biolsongroup.com or you can go to our website at biolsongroup.com you can go and actually jump on our buyers list right there uh, has an opportunity there. You can see our meet our team, uh, and also you can uh, look at some of our previous podcasts that are available there as well. And uh, thank you for joining us. And we do one more thing before we go. We have an event coming up, so I want to let everybody know, and it's free. So if you are the type of person that likes hmm. a free event, it's actually called Real Estate Free for All. So it is free for everybody except for some sponsors. So there will be some sponsors there that have, I, I said, hey, I don't wanna really wanna make any money on this event. There's, that's not the purpose of the event. I just, there was a couple of people on Facebook that we just kind of were openly messaging um, uh, on Facebook one night and it, it kind of turned into an event. <laughs> and it was like, okay, well, let's do it. We're gonna actually host it right here though in our office. So it could be a great opportunity for the turnkey buyers, mm-hmm. turnkey sure. investors to say, hey, maybe I should go and have fun. It's really not meant to make money. It's not meant to like, sell you into anything Mm -hmm. we're not even we're not going to show you our turnkey properties like we have done in the past it's Mm -hmm. not the purpose of it it's really just to hang out with some other cool real estate investors um break bread and i think in 2021 with (laughs) you know kind of coming out of what we've come out of the last you know year and a half i think people are just ready people are ready to connect people are ready to go and have some fun and uh be with each other and learn a little bit about real estate. It's going to be a relaxed event. It will be very casual. So shorts and t-shirts are totally cool with us. Just so everybody knows, it's not going to be a suit and tie event at all. Um, but we're excited about it. It's going to be October 8th through the 10th. Um, and we're not really promoting it. I mean, we do have some speakers. I'll probably speak a little bit and we'll have, we have lots of other people that will be teaching on how to uh, do private lending, turnkey rentals, maybe uh, yeah, actually property management, uh, short-term rentals. People want to talk about short-term rentals as well. Mm-hmm. So if you're interested in any of those, how to raise private capital will probably come up. It's going to be a little bit of an interactive meeting though. So it's going to be a lot of networking and it's going to be a lot of um, group uh, participation. It's going to be a pretty big event. There's probably be about, about 80 to hundred people here in our office. We have a lot of people already interested in, but I do want everybody to get a ticket. So don't mm-hmm. just show up. Um, because we, we have to stop it at about 100. We cannot take more than 100 people, and we already have 80 that have said they want to be here. They're already on the list. Many people have already booked. So I just want to let you guys know that if you're interested in that, you can either go to goodsuccess.com or you can email me at uh, T. Olson at goodsuccess.com is a, is a good email. It's going to give you the time at buyolsongroup.com because I have a mm-hmm. Olson group. Remember the emails? You have to have a lot uh, of emails. emails. So I have the, true. I, I have those emails, just so everybody knows. <laughs> um, I'm paying for them. He does. Uh, but anyways, uh, turnkey, again, great, everybody. Love being a part of this. Thank you, Jared, for putting this on. Active turnkey. It's the best way to buy rentals. See you guys. Olson Group Network makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional advice. Unless specifically stated otherwise, Olson Group Network does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast, and information from this podcast should not be referenced in any way to imply such approval or endorsement. Any third-party materials or content of any third-party site referenced in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions, standards, or policies of Olson Group Network. 
Olson Group Network assumes no responsibility or liability for the accuracy or completeness of the content contained in third-party materials or on third-party sites referenced in this podcast or the compliance with the applicable laws of such materials and or links referenced herein.